Hello and welcome to this film which is all about halogen displacement reactions. Um, we're getting quite close to the end of the standard level periodicity topic now and this film really builds on what we saw in the last film um, which had to do with the reactivity of different elements. Okay, So now we're going to introduce a different type of reaction. This is actually a reaction between two halogens and we're going to try and use the reactivity of halogens to predict whether these reactions will take place. And we'll have a look at a few examples of these so you can understand what a displacement reaction actually is. Okay, so just as a reminder of something that we were talking about in the previous film where we looked at alkali metals reacting with halogens, we said that the halogens would be more reactive if they attracted electrons strongly because remember they're turning from atoms into ions okay so they've got to gain electrons so atoms with high electronegativities like fluorine will be more reactive than the others and in fact the reactivity we saw would fall down the group here because the most electronegative element is at the top followed by chlorine and so on okay so that's just a reminder of the reactivity of halogens which we saw in the last film there's nothing new there what is new to this film is this idea of a displacement reaction. So here's a general equation for a displacement reaction. And what you might be able to see here is that we've got one halogen here as a halide ion. That is to say it's got an extra electron. And it's potentially reacting with another halogen, Y, which is an atom at this stage. And if the reaction happens, then Y takes these electrons from X, it becomes a Y ion, or in other words, a halide ion, and in the process, this halide ion turns back into halogen atoms. Okay? And so we can say that Y has displaced X. Okay? Y has removed the electrons from X and become Y minus, kind of kicking X out in the process. Okay? So that's what a displacement reaction is in general. I've called these redox reactions because they involve reduction and oxidation taking place. But I'm going to kind of avoid the topic of reduction and oxidation at this stage because this is something that comes up in another topic. So for the periodicity, for the time being, for the periodicity thing, I'm just going to focus on the reactivity here. I'm not going to talk about reducing agents and oxidizing agents and things like that because you'll get a better idea of the meaning of those terms when you do reduction and oxidation. Anyway, um, let's have a look at a few possible um, displacement reactions and decide whether we think they're actually going to happen. Okay, So we're going to predict how feasible we think these reactions are. Now, you might have noticed in the previous slide, if I just go back to that previous slide, you might have noticed there seems to be something missing here. There's no positive ions. Okay, Now, I can't just go to the cupboard and get myself a jar of bromide ions. I could get some potassium bromide and react that with chlorine, but I couldn't just go and get some bromide. All right. But notice another thing. In all of these equations here, my alkali metal ion, which could potentially confuse us in this topic because we've been talking a lot about alkali metals and their reactions, nothing's actually changed. Okay. This ion hasn't taken part in any reaction. We call these ions spectator ions because they're just kind of sitting around watching the action. Okay, um, Nothing's actually happening to them. Now, let's try and decide if this first reaction is feasible. Okay, If it's feasible, that means that chlorine atoms would be able to take electrons away from bromide ions and turn them back into bromine molecules whilst in the process becoming chloride ions themselves. If that's going to happen, then chlorine has to attract electrons more strongly than bromide, bromine, and we know that it does. So yes, this reaction is feasible. In this second equation here, we can see that if this reaction is going to take place, then the chloride ions that we've got here are going to turn into chlorine molecules, and in the process, iodine is going to take electrons from the chloride and turn into iodide. Is that likely to happen? Well, no, because iodine isn't as reactive as chlorine. It's not as electronegative as chlorine. It doesn't attract electrons as strongly. So, no, this reaction is not feasible. It's not likely to happen. You might want to just pause the film and see if you can figure this one out for yourself before I do it. But, obviously, 
coming back after your pause I can just carry on straight away and say well what's going to happen here well these iodide ions would have to lose their electrons and give them to bromine if that happened then bromine would turn into bromide ions and the iodide ions would turn back into iodine is that likely to happen well yes because bromine is more reactive than iodine okay so there's a few specific examples of displacement reactions some of which would happen some of which wouldn't you can see hopefully that they all kind of fit this general formula that we presented or general equation I should say general equation that we presented in the previous slide the only difference being that these equations actually have the positive ions that would appear in an equation because we can't just go to a cupboard and get ourselves free halide ions okay but the key thing is really but now that we're at the end of this film is that you understand what is meant by a displacement reaction you've seen a few examples and hopefully you can use the ideas of reactivity that we covered in the previous films to decide which displacement reactions will happen and which ones won't as usual any confusion or anything you'd like to comment on please feel free to post something on YouTube or to come and see me